Uh, what? What are you saying? I said all of this could have been prevented. What's going on, everybody? Welcome back to JBox Studios, your home for reviews, reactions, and ridiculousness. And man, I just watched a very upsetting, depressing, shocking, baffling documentary from Neon, which is on VOD right now, and it comes out on Hulu next week, and it's called Totally Under Control. This new documentary showcases public health officials discussing the U.S. government's response to the COVID-19 pandemic. So is this new COVID coronavirus totally under control, which it's not, surprise, surprise, documentary, just a must-see right now. Let's find out. But before I get my thoughts, let me know what you guys thought of Totally Under Control if you've already seen this one or now very much looking forward to it because you had no idea that this existed. Now let's get into some of the good. Which right off the bat, getting into some of the good is very ironic essentially because this documentary, Totally Under Control, was this secret documentary that they filmed from essentially the beginning of 2020 to about April, mid-April of this year, obviously tackling COVID, coronavirus, the mismanagement of everything, Trump, the administration, what other countries were doing, and essentially the world social distancing that we are now living in, masks in all. And I think that, like I said, this was shocking, baffling, infuriating, almost comical at a sense because of the mismanagement of the upper leadership of this country, of the CDC, of FEMA, of the Food and Drug Administration, everyone and anyone here, there's a lot of red tape to go through, and it just doesn't seem like they could do it. They had, they, they had all of the information. They had professionals. They had scientific elite people, professionals that knew what they were doing and no one listened to them. That is what the infuriating part of this documentary is, is that Trump, the administration, they had the information. They knew what to do, but they let their ego, they let the economy get in their way, and essentially it destroyed everything. And that's what we're living in right now, is this stay at home, wear a mask, everyone is sick, a lot of people are dying, our loved ones. It is depressing what we are living in. And finding out all of this information that these government officials essentially knew is depressing to watch. Like, I was getting emotional. I was tearing up watching this because it's just like, you you, you could have stopped this. You could have prevented this. And one of the funny things is, again, it, it's not funny at all, but I thought it was very ironic, is that they compared our situation with South Korea. They both started about the same time, but South Korea, they said, and I quote, in South Korea, politicians stayed out of it and we let professionals and health experts take care of it. That is why South Korea is somewhat keeping this under control. Obviously, this was filmed months ago. Right now, I think everyone's situation, every country's situation has kind of changed a bit. I mean, Italy, you know, they did, they literally went down, locked down the whole country and whatnot. But if we would have just listened to the professionals, we listened to health experts here in the United States, I think a lot of this would have been under control, and that's the thing, is this documentary sheds a light at all of these people, not essentially whistleblowing, but kind of stating their opinion from a professional standpoint, and them getting booted out of organizations, the Trump administration, and almost being bad-mouthed on the air essentially from people who didn't know what the hell was going on. And the thing is, this documentary does a great job of weaving through, showing how we compared and how we kind of handled this moving forward, how people high up, leadership, knew about this coronavirus months, weeks, days before everything literally <laughs> the bed. And then it shows how a little bit of evidence comes out, a little bit more, and essentially the unravel of our economy, the downfall, the, the, the cases, the deaths, everything going up and up and up and up. Like, it is, oh my gosh, it is baffling, like I said, to see how all of this played out. Because the information was right 
there. We had test kits. We had, we we had everything, and then it was too late. You know, maybe one, two days, maybe a week late, and then literally hits the fan. And it even dives further into almost unqualified people stating their opinion of being uh, uh, promoted up in leadership. Like, it showed that uh, Jared Kushner was in charge of this, like, elite group of gathering PPE, which, again, was a huge, complete shortage, which that dives into another thing that I'll have to point into or talk about here in a sec. But Jared Kushner was put in essentially a task force. The task force was made up of 20-year-old volunteers that knew nothing prior to going into this situation. That was just the tip of the iceberg of everything mismanagement, everything that was just not going on. That was right. That was correct. That seemed, oh my gosh, it, again, it is baffling to put these young kids to get contracts for the government to reach out to manufacturers to get PPE here in the United States. Sure, the Trump administration blames it on the Obama administration, but these, these PPEs, the, the stockpile has a five-year shelf life. They should have been replacing this stuff. I understand that that was probably on the, the, the end of the Obama administration. They did not replenish it, but Trump had about three and a half years to do this as well. But even getting into the, the, the PPE and the, the contracts, like they, they blame it on the state governments rather than the federal. And it's this bidding war. Essentially, they, they compared it to eBay, where this state government is going in and betting on it. Then this one bets higher then this one, then this one, this one, driving up the price when in, in reality, it's human lives. Price should not be an issue here. And it just sounds like there are some sketchy things going on from money to be made, tax cuts, real estate. It, it's so... Ugh! That's how I felt watching this whole documentary is just this could have been prevented. And now we are living in this world that is current times 2020. This documentary totally under control even goes into kind of the backstory of this height of, you know, hydrochloroquine or whatever it's called. Of essentially how this came into the know as a as a cure, as a as a def deterrent against COVID was a doctor apparently gave it to his clients, patients, didn't see any results from, from them coming back. Who knows if it, there's no evidence that this even worked, but the Trump administration saw a Facebook video of this doctor and decided to use this information to, to essentially be on board for this cocktail of drugs. I could make a video and put it online and claim that this worked. Again, I don't have a PhD, but that's essentially what they went to to prove that this information, like, it is not under control. It is mismanaged. It is infuriating. It is depressing. They even point out that they were charging people $3,000 for a procedure or something that the supplies cost $10. I understand that you got to make a little bit of money. It's profit. It's money. It's a business. But $3,000 for a $10 thing feels disgusting. Obviously, I am being very emotional watching this, and I think that that is the response a lot of people are going to get. I will say that there are a few negatives, I guess, where they bring up certain aspects or problems or mention something in the documentary, and then they leave it hanging, where they don't entirely go into it, where, you know, maybe there is some good that was coming from this. Maybe people did make the right steps. Maybe people made mistakes, and it is on them. But there's an overwhelming amount of evidence that proves that people high up, officials, documents, reports were written that this could have been prevented, stopped, diminished. Overall, Totally Under Control is a documentary 
that is very ironic because nothing is under control. With it doing a great job of painting a timeline of, hey, we should do something to it's too late, we, we, we've gone too far, bringing in these healthcare professionals, CDC members, volunteers, people, political people that were in the know and now essentially whistleblowing, and also just the disgusting nature of how we compare it to other countries and the evidence or lack there of evidence of certain drugs and procedures and how the news media greed takes control of all of this stuff. However, with a few nitpicks here or there where I wish they would have gone a little bit more into information on the other side, I would highly recommend checking out Totally Under Control. This is a documentary that paints the mismanagement at the top, the uneducation, the, the just way social media marketing corporate greed is used to diminish something that we sh we knew about way before and also something that I think people should watch before this election coming up. In closing, I'm going to give Totally Under Control 4.5 out of 5. Please wear a mask. So what did you all think of Totally Under Control? If you've already seen this one, looking forward to it, d desperately need to go out and check this one out. I want to know in the comments down below. Anyways, though, as always, thank you so much for watching. Watch some more videos up there or right over there, you know, brand new content every single week here on the JBuck Studios channel. Again, this is available on VOD now, Hulu next week, so stay tuned for all of that. Follow my social media down there, like this video, subscribe to the JBuck Studios channel, and until next time, We'll see you later.